All right, so in today's story, I want to take a look at the first type of stochastic model known as the discrete time map of chains, okay? In short, D, T, and C, which falls under the classification of discrete state space with discrete time process, okay? All right, so in today's tutorial, we will cover some brief introduction to DTMC. We will also take a look at um, transition probability metrics with solved examples, and also take a look at the transition diagram with some solved examples, okay? So let's begin with the first session on a brief introduction to discrete time Markov chains. So what is a discrete time Markov chain? Now, Markov chains in general models a sequence of random variables, which correspond to the state of a certain system in such a way that um, the state at one time depends only on the state in the previous time. So for instance, the chances that you will be admitted for a master's degree program, giving your BSc degree, high school certificate or transcript, elementary school transcript and kindergarten transcript will depend only on your current transcript, which is the BSc degree, okay? So by definition, a stochastic process is called a discrete time mark of chain if it has the following three properties. One, the state space of the process is finite or countably infinite. Two, the index set of the process is discrete, which can be finite or countably infinite. And three, the process has the Markovian property, okay? And we already know this from our previous tutorial. That is the conditional distribution that the chain will visit a future state J at time n plus one, given that we are in the current state I at time n, and given some past state as well, K index n minus one up to K naught is independent of this past state that depends only on the current state K, okay? and that is what we have on the right hand side here. And we can rewrite this in this form, okay? So this is basically the conditional distribution that the chain will visit a future state J at time n plus one, given that when the current state i at time n. So in other words, we can say that with the Markovian property, and um, what matters in predicting the future of the process is its current or present state and not the path by which the process got to its current state, okay? So let's take an example. Let x index n denote the weather condition for the nth day then we can have our state space in this form. So let's assume these are the possible weather condition. We can, it can be sunny, it can be windy, it can be rainy, or it can be cloudy, okay? We want to assign some values to these labels. So one is being assigned to sunny, we assign two to windy, three to rainy, and four to cloudy, okay? So this is going to be discrete and it is finite, okay? And our index set is also going to be countably infinite, okay? Because we can observe the weather condition on the first day, on the second day, on the third day, in that order, okay? So um, we can actually visualize this process. Let me, let's take a look at that. So um, this is going to be a possible realization or sample function for the process, okay? So we have our index set on the x axis and we have our state space on the y axis. So um, before the first day, it was assumed that the weather condition was between windy and rainy. On the first day, it was observed that the weather condition was windy. Um, on the second day, it was observed that the weather condition was rainy. On the third day, it came to a sunny in that order, okay? So this is just a possible realization for the process. Now let's take a look at another example. Let y index n denote the product sales for the nth month. Then we can have our state space in this form. So let's assume the product sales are in dollars. So it means that uh, the product sales will assume any non-negative integer. We can record um, nothing in a particular month. We can record one dollar, two dollar, three dollar in that order. Okay. So the product sales can assume any non-negative integer. All right. Now, with our index set, it is going to be countably infinite, okay? So we can observe the product sales in the first month, in the second month, in the third month, in that order. So this is going to be countably infinite. And it's assumed that the product sales for the next month will always depend on the current month, okay? We can actually visualize this process also. So let's take a look at this. So there's going to be a possible sample path or realization for the process. We have our index set on the x-axis and we have our um, 
product sales on the white houses. So before the first month, it was assumed that the product sales was between five hundred to one thousand dollars. On the first month, it was um, the product sales was around five hundred dollars. You know, on the second month, it came around one thousand dollars. So in that order, right? Okay. So now let's take a look at some assumption underlying the respect time markup chain. So we assume that the transition probabilities do not depend on time, which becomes a one-step transition probability, okay? So if the probabilities do not depend on time, then it follows that the transition from the current state to the next state has a time index of one. That is, when you take the difference in the index set, you are going to get one. This is what I'm trying to illustrate. So if you take a look at the uh, index set, once we take the difference that is subtract the current time from the future time, we're going to obtain one. So n plus one minus n, this will give us, okay, the same applies to this one. Once we take the difference one minus zero, we're also going to obtain one. And this is how we represent the one-step transition probability, okay? So we can deduce that this is going to be a one-step transition probability. The same applies to this one, the same applies to this one, okay? Now take note that one step transition probabilities are set to be stationary and therefore the process become a time homogeneous or stationary Markov chain, all right? So this will bring us to the end for this session. In our next tutorial session, we will take a look at the, the um, transition probability metrics, okay? So I hope you join me. Um, if you find value in today's tutorial video, don't forget to subscribe if you have not. And thank you for watching.